Hi there, glad to see you. I guess you, as so many others, are interested in learning more about and understanding the medical device regulation, the MDR. Well, then you have come to the right place. So, I am Pontus Jeda. I worked in the medical device industry for 20 years and my interest for regulatory affairs brought me to the world of notified bodies in 2014. The notified body I worked for was designated for MDR under my management. I am also an MDR lead auditor, so trust me, I know what I am talking about and how this will affect you. Taking this short course will give you a better understanding of the MDR at a high level and get you confident in asking the right questions to your internal and external stakeholders. And remember, it is mandatory to fully comply with the MDR to get access to the European markets. The goals for this short course are get a basic overview of the regulation and the width of it so you can ask the right question, getting comfortable in finding your way around the regulation, understand the role of the notified bodies under MDR. Then, based on this, you should be able to figure out if the full course on MDR that we offer on medicaldevicehq.com could help you in your job or career. The full course is similar to this one, but much more comprehensive, with more in-depth information and quizzes at the end of each topic to test your knowledge and understanding. On the full course, you will also receive a course certificate at the end, which many auditors will be looking for. So, let's start cutting up this elephant. You might wonder what's all the fuss about? Any major things to consider in the MDR? Yes, the major things, according to me, are It is now a regulation and it's much more comprehensive than the old medical device directive, which is really good, I think, to further reduce the difference in interpretation. Some people, including myself, are quite frustrated about the lack of clarity to some parts of this new regulation. But what could we expect? People are still arguing about the MDD that was published in 1993. Next, all notified bodies need to start from scratch and get designated again even though they are still responsible for follow-up, the manufacturer's compliance to MDD, as long as they have valid certificates out there. Udamed, an elephant in its own right, actually. Udamed is the new pan-European database for economic operators and devices. Linked to Udamed, we have the UDI, Unique Device Identifier, a quite massive topic in its own right. One interesting thing about this is that there is actually no such thing as a UDI, but I will get back to that in the full course. UDI requirements also means that you might need to add a new supplier, a so-called designated issuing entity, to provide you with actual UDI codes. Here are the names of the current designated issuing entities for UDI according to MDR. Also linked to UDAMED is the SRN, the Single Registration Number, which is an all-new requirement under MDR and a very welcome requirement, especially for manufacturers outside the EU, to get better traceability of the economic operators. This is also linked to UDAMED requirements. Then there is EMDN, another new and interesting abbreviation. EMDN stands for European Medical Device Nomenclature. This is especially important for manufacturers of class 2B devices, since this is crucial for the sample size of the technical documentation when you apply for MDR with a notified body. I will come back to why in the full course. <laughs> Sorry to say, but there are some more concepts and abbreviations that we need to talk about. Next, we have Person Responsible for Regulatory Compliance, or just PRRC which is really, in my opinion, a very good requirement to ensure better compliance. And maybe the reason for you to take this course. This requirement is actually also linked to Udamed. Then we have Article 10 in the MDR, which is introducing some requirements that are more or less new and very important. The main takeaway from this article is that all medical device manufacturers shall have a QMS a quality management system, including, among others, a process for risk management, clinical evaluation, and a post-market surveillance system. Just for clarification, having a QMS also applies to class 1 manufacturers. However, you do not need a notified body if you only have class 1 products. Having a QMS, to some extent, applies also to importers and distributors. And these importers and distributors are new types of economical operators that also need to follow MDR. Still with me? 
Hold on, I will be done with going over the major topics soon. SSCP, I know, another acronym. SSCP stands for Summary of Safety and Clinical Performance. This requirement, as it basically says, requires the manufacturer to summarize the output of the risk management and the clinical evaluation. But please note, this is only applicable for high-risk implants and class 3 devices. Another new requirement for class 2B and class 3 implants is for the manufacturer to supply the patients with an implant card to enhance traceability. Then we have the Periodic Safety Update Reports, or PSUR. This is kind of the results and output of the post-market surveillance plan, and it needs to be documented and also made available. What was earlier known as the essential requirements under MDD are now called General Safety and Performance Requirement, or just GSPR. This is a comprehensive 14-page part of the MDR, which covers general and specific device requirements applicable to all classes of medical devices. Just to mention a few interesting requirements under GSPR. You need to write the words medical device on the label. And please note that there is no harmonized symbol for this right now, even if available in a standard. There are new requirements regarding flammable or explosive substances, actual limits for some harmful substances like carcinogenic or mutagenic substances. Devices shall be designed and manufactured in such a way that adjustment, calibration and maintenance can be done safely and effectively. Last but not least in this non-exhaustive list is the new risk class the class 1 reusable or 1R, not to be mixed up with reprocessing, which is another thing under MDR. This new class also requires the manufacturer to involve a notified body in the conformity assessment to get market access in Europe. Those were the major things I wanted to highlight. As I mentioned in the introduction, I will not only try to give an overview of the MDR from the manufacturer's perspective, but also a tiny bit from a notified body's perspective. So let's continue with the definition of those two and some more. Manufacturer then means any natural or legal person who manufactures or fully refurbishes a device or has a device designed, manufactured or fully refurbished and markets that device under its own name or trademark. Meaning that this regulation is applicable whether or not you have designed the device yourself. Also, it's a way to terminate the old own brand labeling or OBL setup, since even putting your trademark on the device will make you the manufacturer. Notified body then means a conformity assessment body designated in accordance with this regulation. Please note that a notified body is designated while a conformity assessment body is accredited, as for example, a pure ISO 13485 auditing organization even though most notified bodies are also accredited for ISO 13485. Talking a bit about the notified bodies then, if your device has a risk class higher than pure class 1, you need to involve a notified body to get able to get market access in Europe. The role of the notified body is to assess the manufacturer's quality management system and for class 2A and higher classes, also sample the documentation related to the actual device to be covered by the certified QMS. The notified bodies are under scrutiny of the member states in Europe, but are not considered to be part of the authorities, even though they could be considered equivalent to the FDA in USA. The main issue for the notified bodies is that they do not have more information available regarding MDR than the manufacturers have, even if their involvement is required for you to gain market access in most cases. And also please note that the notified bodies are never to act as consultants or even actually tell you specifically what to do to be MDR compliant. So back to the definitions. Conformity assessment means the process demonstrating whether the requirements of this regulation relating to a device have been fulfilled. But please note this is not just the finished device that needs to be compliant, it is also the QMS that has governed the device to become what it is, unless you are following Annex 10 of MDR. And this is where the notified bodies comes into the picture. I know this is a bit complicated, but I will explain further in the full course.
intended purpose then means the use for which a device is intended according to the data supplied by the manufacturer on the label, in the instructions for use, or in promotional or sales materials or statements, and as specified by the manufacturer in the clinical evaluation. This is particularly important for all manufacturers because it is the intended purpose or intended use, as sometimes called, that is basically sets the level of the extent of requirements to be fulfilled in the MDR. Clinical evaluation then means a systematic and planned process to continuously generate, collect, analyze and assess the clinical data pertaining to a device in order to verify the safety and performance, including clinical benefits of the device when used as intended by the manufacturer. This is not to be mixed up with clinical investigation, which is when the medical device is used on real human subjects, but this can be part of the clinical evaluation. CE marking of conformity or CE marking means a marking by which a manufacturer indicates that a device is in conformity with the applicable requirements set out in this regulation and other applicable union harmonization legislation providing for its affixing. <laughs> That's a long sentence. But this is basically the main objective for you to reach. And remember, it is always the responsibility of the manufacturer to apply the CMRT, no one else. This was a very short list of a total of 71 definitions available in the MDR. These definitions are important to understand or at least be well aware of since they are consequently used within the rest of the MDR. These definitions are in the second article of the MDR. So let's have a quick look into the MDR. This regulation was published by the European Commission on the 5th of May 2017 and thereby replacing the MDD and AI MDD. And it's entered into force 20 days later, meaning the 26th of May 2017. And it shall apply from 26th of May 2021. That is the famous date of application or DOA. And this is what it actually looks like. Not super hot, but it's what we have to live with. So, as I said in the introduction, I would like to share some tips with you to get a good grip of this regulation. Start by downloading the MDR as a clean PDF. It's free to download on the web and then start to set up your own bookmarks in that document. Start by adding a bookmark with the name of the article for every 10th article and then for all the annexes. It is under the annexes that you find in the end of the MDR, you will probably find most of the answers to your questions on what to actually do to fulfill the MDR requirements. Then start adding the bookmarks of those articles you find interesting, such as, for example, Article 52, Conformity Assessment, Article 61, Clinical Evaluation, Article 84, Post-Market Surveillance, and so on. But don't forget the annexes. As I said, that's where the answers are. And if you are taking this course outside the EU, the Articles 11 to 15 might be of utmost importance. Then name the bookmarks as you think they should be. Don't just copy the text of the articles from the MDR. This is for you to better understand what they are actually meaning. After setting up your bookmarks, I recommend you to start highlighting the requirements that you find interesting or related to you and your devices. Also add comments in the PDF, like for example, where there are reference to other articles, it's good to add a comment what the reference is actually related to, a bit like this. When you have the bookmark set up, I recommend you to have two PDFs open at the same time when you're reading the MDR, at least in the beginning, to be able to scroll between the reference without losing track of where you were. And my other tips, carefully read the annex related to the notified bodies and their process requirements. That is Annex 7, Section 4. This is very good for your understanding of what the notified body will ask you as a manufacturer and actually explains the way of getting your sought after MDR certificates. Thanks for watching this short course. I do understand that this is a massive subject, but I hope that I have made you interested in learning more. And if you are, then check out the full course. It's called Introduction to Medical Device Regulation and it's found on medicaldevicehq.com. Thanks again. Thank you.